Welcome to another video view of things going on on the Burlington Northern Mullah Railroad layout, uh, theoretically set in 1973. I'm your host, Bert Stewart, and we had a train day over here this week where we were working on the layout, and I took a bunch of video of the testing we did, of the track cleaning we did in the Delta Yard. And I thought that this might be fun to watch um, for somebody, maybe just me in my old age, but um, it gives me an opportunity to describe the layout of the yard, what each track is for, and uh, gets you gives you an opportunity just to watch a steam engine charge around, which we don't do that much on the Burlington Northern since we're set in 1973 and we we're supposed to be running diesels. As you know, I have a fictitious arrow gauge branch that starts in the Delta Yard in Everett, which you're seeing here. And recently I spray painted the entire yard with a rattle can of a Rust-Oleum paint called Weathered Wood, an idea I got from an article in the HON3 annual published by White River Publications. And the good news is that the yard looks a lot better in this subdued color the rails are now no longer shiny. But the bad news is that the Rust-Oleum paint is very aggressive on the top of the rail, and I had to go through hours of scraping and uh, sanding and whatever to remove every bit of paint over every uh, millimeter of the top of the rail head. So that completed. My friend Robin Peel was over here uh, for one of our work parties and took the HON3 locomotive you see here and just ran through all the tracks in the yard to make sure that this track cleaning had worked. And I'll let you watch this and describe the tracks now, but at some point I'll break away and also show you some of the cleaning methods that I used. At this point, the engine is backing up the main line, which would go up to the helix. Uh, now Robin is going to shove those stock cars onto the what I call the yard lead. It's the second track over from the narrow gauge main line, and it's used for switching cars in that three-track yard that you see on the left, as well as uh, giving the locomotives access to the turntable and roundhouse, which is in the back in the shadows, and which you may have seen in some previous or subsequent videos. So if you look behind his finger there, you can see the, the turntable. Um, so that this track would normally be used for, uh, like I said, getting to the engine facility as well as uh, as a switching lead for these three tracks. Now he's going to run up the three tracks just to make sure they're nice and clean. But they look pretty good. Yeah, if things are unreliable, it can drive you crazy. It's not that, and it only has to not work, you know, 5% of the time, but it's still really frustrating. It's very kind of rich that these very different manufacturers, because this, the manufacturer I had, my mom's bad dimensions from it, and it's quite uh, You can see he's just flicking the turnouts with his finger, because I've used a bunch of micro-engineering turnouts in this narrow gauge yard and they uh, easily flick with uh, just the touch of the finger. So here's the central track in the yard, and uh, we can debate whether it's a two or a three track yard because I plan to put some industries against the wall, which will render that third track against the wall uh, more into an industrial spur category. If nothing else, I clearly need to hide that uh, angle bracket that's supporting the deck above it. You can see a little yellow colored shack there that I plan to 
replace with some sort of an icing facility so that we'll have a place for the reefers, which were very popular on the narrow gauge line, and uh, we'll have trains of those uh, here to supply the upper town of opportunity. Let's take a break in the testing and do an overview of the yard. Uh, those cars and the engine are in what will be the oil transfer track. And then behind that, you can see the uh, yard ladder for the narrow gauge yard with the engine tracks and the turntable behind it underneath a ledge. And we've just started the process of painting the ties. Now that they're spray painted with a flat base color, we're starting to add a variety of acrylic uh, washes and paints to um, make them look, let make the track look more realistic, hand laid. Um, you can see I just turned the uh, one of the lights on to illuminate the scene better. These are um, photography lights that turn out to be really handy as work light work lights as well. And now we'll zoom in and look at the track. Uh, you can see we're just randomly adding several shades of brown and black uh, uh, to random ties. And I'll go over all that with a black wash and uh, uh, then we'll be able to apply ballast. So here on the uh, north end uh, of the yard you can see the the two spurs that lead up to the stock pen and the transfer. Oh, there's, there's a shot of the brushes we've been using, just small flat brushes. Sadly, the uh, cattle are just in a pile. You can see I crossed a couple of ties on the end of each track to serve as an end bumper. And uh, we'll get to these cows in a subsequent video. Hopefully soon. That's a sad-looking pile. I like to apply the ground cover to the whole area before I lay the track. These tracks are glued down with liquid latex, but having the ground cover under there just makes the whole thing look permanent while I get around to ballasting, because as some of you know, it can take me decades to get around to finishing all the ballasting. So here's one of the things I had to do to clean the track. I get my moto tool out with a wire brush and apply it lightly to the top of the frog and uh, to the inside edges of the points. And you have to do this very carefully because the heat from the wire brush can easily melt the plastic and ruin your turnout. Here's a close up after um, I cleaned the paint off those surfaces. Uh, you could try cleaning it off with uh, sandpaper or files, but it, I did some of that too. Here you can also see there are rail joiners inside the turnout that can be a problem. And there's, of course, the points that I've tried to, uh, the, not the points, the frog that I've tried to clean off as well. But it's amazing how the paint can stick. Uh, and you really have to get look at it very closely with uh, magnifying glass or strong reading glasses in order to even see that the paint is there. Robin and I tried this test a couple of weeks ago and the engine was having all kinds of problems and that made us realize that we thought we had cleaned the track but we hadn't done it as carefully as I've done it now. So here's the train pulling out of the middle uh, arrival departure track you might call it on a model railroad. I have three tracks there, the left in uh, the arrival departure area. The track on the left, as we described, was the lead for the yard tracks. The track in the middle that we just came out of is for temporarily parking, making up and breaking down trains. And then this track is the dual gauge main line, uh, both for the narrow and standard gauge. Um, well, for the standard gauge, it's really a run-around track in the back of Zelta Yard. 
And for the narrow gauge, this track leads down to a staging yard that's at the far end in the tunnel underneath that removable scenery there that we've, we've looked at in other videos. Well, now we're going to test our two spur tracks. Uh, this is the track that goes out to the stock pen. And it seems to be running very well. That middle stock car door came ajar. I didn't move the camera so you could see that he made it all the way to the end of the track with that locomotive. Now he's going to flip the switch and come into the track that's used for, um, well, several purposes. We're going to have a transfer crane for moving loads between standard and narrow gauge flat cars. I also am thinking about having a little passenger station at the end of this spur so that we can transfer passengers between the Empire Builder and other standard gauge trains with the uh, train to Opportunity, which will run here on the narrow gauge. And as you're seeing there, this locomotive developed an odd quirk of uh, stopping uh, at certain throttle settings, and it, it wasn't related to dirt on the track. It was a little schism in the decoder. I'm not really sure what was going on there. And then after a while, it just uh, stopped being a problem. Another one of our model railroad mysteries for another day. Now that we've checked out those two major spurs, uh, we're going to come down the standard gauge or dual gauge uh, lead and just test the other two tracks. Now, uh, these dual gauge turnouts are the old Shinohara Code 70 um, models, which are not currently available except uh, in swap meets. But I was able to get enough of them to do one side of this delta yard in dual gauge. And really this is just for temporary storage of narrow gauge cars if we need it. Uh, since there aren't run around tracks on the other end of these two tracks in delta, we tend to use it more for um, standard gauge operations and having the dual gauge is just there if we need it and because I had the right switches. At this point this video has degenerated into if you like watching a train run around with no particular purpose other than testing if the rails are clean then you're as addicted to model railroading as I am. Now this is the other track in the Delta Yard. Uh, as with all Burlington Northern Yards, the main line, which is the track you see on the right next to the reading glasses there, uh, that would be called the main track. And then the track to the left of it, which is the siding, uh, the standard gauge track, that would be called track one, uh, which was always the track next to the main line. Then next to that we have delta track two and delta track three. Um, and the, he, the engine's coming up at us there on track two. I'm mentioning this uh, nomenclature because we'll use it in other yards in other videos and you'll understand where it comes from. I think many railroads may have used this standard, but I, I know that the Burlington Northern did. So that's all clear. We've got uh, clean tracks in both Delta 
uh, standard gauge or dual gauge and the narrow gauge. It's all looking very good. Uh, we're just going to run down to the other end and uh, call it a day. Except there's one thing. While we've been fussing with this, uh, another friend has been running his brand new SPNS steam engine around the layout, and I think it's about to appear on the right hand side on the low line. So you'll just have to see if that happens. I'm not sure what problem Robin is having down with that switch, but it's probably a loose point assembly on the microengineering turnouts. Sometimes the spring switch is weak and you have to strengthen it. But that's different from a problem with dirty track, which I think we've solved. I'm hearing some serious steam power in the background there. I think something is heading our way. Better get that piece of paper out of the way. There it is. Now if we could just get him to turn the sound back on. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll join me on my YouTube channel with many, many more, both in the past and the future. So for now, this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains.